here to play for big stakes. The blackjack tables are empty. The roulette wheel is still. The gambling will be offshore. It's the American Powerboat Association Baja Offshore Series World Championship. And it's time to place your bets. The 1998 APBA UIM World Championship. Hello, everyone. I'm Dick Crippen. Welcome to the beautiful Casino Coast, Biloxi, Mississippi. Well, this is the culmination of a two-day event to determine the 1998 APBA UIM World Championship. Now, it's a real easy formula. Points are awarded according to finishing position spread over two races. The highest overall wins the Worlds. Now, the strategy seems simple. Go fast and win. To set the stage, though, for today's race, let's go down to the pits and join my broadcast partner, Rich Lurie. Dick, go fast and win is not always the key here. Defending champion Matt Alcone used consistency in the form of a first and a third place to take last year's world championship. In a surprising turn of events, Matt Alcone finds himself the chaser rather than the one being chased. In race one, it was Forrest Barber and Graham Bowie on ice taking the charge from the start and never looking back. Forrest ran the event with a blistering average speed of 134 miles per hour, taking the checkered flag, and now sits atop the points lead going into today's final race. Our boat is running stronger than it ever has. We've uh, had uh, power uh, to get us out in front and to keep us there the last race, and I don't think that's going to change. Uh, so, yeah, there's pressure. and uh, But, again, uh, establishing a lead is going to be very important, and that's our intention. The national champions spent the whole race doing what this year they were not used to doing, chasing. They edged out WHM Motorsport for a second-place finish. There was a protest filed for a lane violation that carries a 10-minute penalty, which threatened to put Alcone last, but was overturned, and Alcone Motorsports officially placed second, trailing by only eight seconds. We have a greater uh, concern now with this overlap rule. We know not only have to watch the traffic, we have to watch the overlap and this and that, and it's going to get dicey in there. And there's going to have to be a lot of close calls if you're going to want to win the world championship. And of course, the world championship takes a lot of work on the engines and getting everything just right, because that's how you control the boat. You need that speed, but you need to be able to control it and keep it on the water. They've done a lot of modification on these boats. They have already raced earlier in the week once, this will be the second race today. There you see Joey Impressia on WHM Motorsports checking things out. How sweet it is. A lot of power developed out of their new Oldsmobile engines in the first race. And look what's happened here. Fountain has shaved off the back end. That extension out the back tends to lift the rear of the boat and lay the nose over for high speed. But this is an acceleration course, so we just got rid of everything that lifts the, the, the rear of the boat up and trying to do everything we can to get the nose up, get air in it quicker, and so we accelerate fast is what we're after. The drivers, the throttlemen, they are on board. They are ready. It'll be offshore racing at its finest here at the APBA. UIM World Championship. And every one of these drivers right now are thinking their strategy over. The fans are ready. Lots of fans have lined the bank and the waterway here in Biloxi, Mississippi. The World Championship is brought to you by Baja Marine, the number one high-performance boat manufacturer in the world. Baja, speed changes you. And by Sitco SuperGuard Motor Oil, the official motor oil of the American Powerboat Association. Sitco, when it counts. World Championship. A beautiful is gathering along the banks. Let's take a look at our Gaffrick Precision Instruments map, and you can see it's six miles, four turns. Pretty basic course, Rich. Basically a very tight course. The traffic in the earlier race was a major factor. The weather today is perfect for top speed running. And top speed is something Matt Alcone is going to be looking for, along with throttleman Jerry Galbraith aboard the Alcone Motorsports boat, which has been a dominant force so far on the circuit. Sporting identical engines to Alcone in a hull of the same manufacturer, Forrest Barber and John Tomlinson, expect it to be tight competition. But not the only competition. WHM Motorsports is out there also. A 46-foot boat with two 900-horsepower Mercuries, Billy Moff and Joey Impressia. And that's the first boat in the Mercury team. 
Two Wizen veterans, Carl Myers and Bobby Moore. Carl Myers' last race in open class. And they're going to be looking around to see where the Fountain Mercury boat is. Now, this is interesting. Reggie Fountain will be both driving and throttling. Joey Griffin is along as the navigator on the boat. And this event marks the debut of the long-awaited In Contempt. This boat earlier in the season in testing flipped over backwards in its maiden voyage. The guys have been having a little fun this week. The Matt and Jerry Show, Alcon number 11 with a stripe right through it, signifying no more. Well, I'll tell you who had the most fun with it, Matt Alcon. He got a hold of one of the decals. He said, hey, I'll show it off the back end of my boat. I love it. So there he is putting it on his boat, and he will go racing with it today. Head games a tradition in motor racing. There are two other classes in this race. Modified 19, Cat Can Do led the fleet on the first day of racing. And in Super V, number one, Ocean Spray led the way. They were also the national champions, Dick. Well, they come in with a lot of competition, and, of course, that traffic is going to be a big thing. Now, remember, too, Rich, that they have installed a rule that requires a boat to stay in a lane at the start, especially going into turn number one. Dick, as you know from your days in hydroplane racing, lane rules are key to safety in powerboat racing. As these boats get faster and the rooster tails get higher and the horsepower goes up, they basically have fire hoses coming out the back, and they can be lethal if they change lanes quickly. And especially with the catamaran, you can see that rooster tail being formed off the back as we go on board the Dram buoy on ice, and that is so powerful that if a boat comes up on it, it will actually pick the boat up if it's too close, and the boat will think, well, this is water, let's ride on it. Here's the start. Green flag has flown, and the open boats are underway, and it is competition. Competition. We look down from our Caterpillar Marine Power aerial camera, and look at that as they try to establish a lead in the Alcone Motorsports is in second place. Drambui on ice is leading the field. Now, Alcone Motorsports, Matt Alcone said he wanted the first turn. He wanted a lead going into the first turn in this race. It was a big part of their strategy. He's on the inside, but he's not leading. Now, let's watch the... Oh, he's Whoa. going over. Alcon Motorsports, Jerry Galbraith on the throttles, Matt Alcon driving the boat is upside down in the water. Helicopter crews are heading that way right now and they're trying to get the rescue boats over there. Now remember, the driver and throttleman both have their own air supply and they are trained in the dunker where they are spun around in a pool and they learn how to get out of a boat that's upside down. They're out, you can see them, they're out and they're safe, Dick. Boy, oh boy, let's look at it again. Well, they came in on the inside of the turn, and as you can see, the boat just started to hook crab sideways a bit. They couldn't recover it, couldn't gather it back in, and she went all the way over. Now, this is great racing speed here. You're talking about 150 to 160 miles an hour, so the momentum is incredible. And once that, that sponson hooked, there was no stopping her. She just was going sideways and then rolled all the way over. The, uh, the size of the boat, 10,000 pounds, you can't slide them that way at that speed. It looks like he lost the back end. He did. It just sort of came around on him. They're running so light because of this high-speed condition here. They've got the drives way up in the air, trying to get the maximum miles an hour. Drambui on ice, they came through the turn beautifully, and they're currently leading. Now, that was a threat to Drambui on ice because a boat on the inside runs a lesser course, and if they could keep their speed up through the turn, Matt Alcone had a chance of taking first, but yet that's the game you play. Now, unlike stock car racing, where they would yellow flag the course and slow the boats down, in this particular case, they're going flat flat out. They will yellow flag the area, but not the race course. Now, we are getting word that the other boats that are supposed to be running the other classes, they are going to yellow flag those starts. We'll explain that to you in just a few moments. But for the time being, the open boats have a clear field. No other traffic is on the course. Now, that could affect the running of these as they start those other boats. Here's your Powerboat Magazine open leaderboard. At the moment, we'll be right back. PBA UIM World Championship, and we've got this and going in the open boats as we look down from our Caterpillar Marine Power aerial camera. Well, Dick, the modified fleet has been held back by the Alcone accident. They kept the flag up. They did not drop the flag for the start so they could get the fleet past the accident point. That has allowed the open boats to come almost all the way around, and they're in the verge of having Dram buoy catch up to them. So now we've got a real timing problem. You can see the Alcone floating upside down in the background, and they still have not started the modified race. The modified fleet continues to follow the pace boat. It has got to be frustrating. Okay. Well, let's just go. go. Get on it. We have a lane straight ahead. They may have started. 
The Modifieds and the Super V starting together. You were aboard the Super V, the Nemsoft, Mark and Paul Nemsoft driving and throttling that boat. Meanwhile, behind them, Drambouille on ice is catching up to the fleet. Drambouille on ice is about to go through a fleet that's running uh, not at full speed. This could be a very dangerous situation. Drambouille is at full racing speed. The modified Super V fleet is not. They're just following the pace boat. What's going to happen here? You can see the fleet coming up in the windshield. Interesting decision to be made by the officials here. The boats are lined up in the Super V's and Modifieds. Drambouille on ice is fast closing from the rear. Now that yellow flag pertains to this fleet only. Drambouille on ice can proceed through the fleet at racing speed, but these guys have to hold back. I haven't seen this before, Dick. Watch out, Drambouille on ice is closing fast. We're watching the yellow flag on the fleet. There's the green and we're off. All right, now we're going to have to give a lot of people room at this turn. Yep. Conversations going on at the start of the race. Meanwhile, Drambouille on ice is still at race speed, Rich, so he's catching and up, and here, here he comes goes. Drambouille. Look at them come right through the fleet. The other fleet's accelerating. Drambouille, he's flat out. He's got about a 40-mile-an-hour advantage, and he used it, and he found himself a lane. Now the problem is WHM Motorsports, they're back there in second place and open. This fleet's accelerating. They're spreading out. Lane rule comes in, into play. Where does WHM go? Well, I don't know, but I can tell you Drambouille on ice can go wherever he wants at this point. It's clean water ahead for Forrest Barber. He has got to be happy he got through that fleet. Now, these guys have the advantage of clean water. They're running at top races. Look at the flames coming out of the back of the exhaust, by the way. They've got a brand new dry exhaust system on Drambouille. They've made a lot of changes for this race, and it's obviously paying off because this boat is flying like we haven't seen it run all season long. She was a perennial runner-up today, boy. She's setting the pace. And she can do that because Matt Alcon is out of the race. The boat went over in the first turn. Now the question is, WHM Motorsports, here you see the Super Vs and the Modifieds coming up, and if you look carefully right on the outside there comes whm motorsports but rich he has had to go all the way to the outside of the course well, WHM center right. yep. WHM Motorsports on the outside of the course going by the Nemshoff. you heard the conversation that was happening aboard that boat dram buoy on ice Looks like he's running all alone. That could have been a race breaker right there. Drambouille on ice went right through the middle of the fleet in a straightaway. WHM had to go around the outside of the same fleet in a turn. I'd say WHM probably lost a half a mile in that maneuver. And that half mile in a race like this, short course, tight traffic, that's the difference between winning and losing four times over. Well, it certainly is. And now Drambouille on ice has got to hope it can hold up that speed. The engines hold together and everything holds onto the boat because they are in the command position. As you look out through the cockpit of the Drambouille on ice and our onboard camera. WHM is still trying to get around the modified fleet, trying to extricate itself from the traffic the Drambouille just flew right through. Now, the Drambouille team, they've spent so much time this season trying to catch Alcon. Now they are leading. They've gone from the runners up to the Golden Boys. Meanwhile, WHM, they find themselves in second place. They've got a boat that's got brand new motors in it, these new experimental Mercury Oldsmobiles on a short course. The interesting point here is the Oldsmobiles are better accelerating motors than the Chevys that are in Drambouille. This is a course that favors acceleration, so perhaps WHM can scratch and claw that half mile they lost back. And WHM Motorsports all season long has been fooling with different combinations, trying to get something that will improve that boat's performance. They have definitely taken steps forward. This is racing action from Biloxi, Mississippi. There you see the Alcone upside down. We'll be back to more action in a moment. Biloxi, Mississippi, but not if you're in the CT Peppers team. The modified boat has gone over on its roof. Both the driver and navigator, we are told, are out of the boat, George Stancombe and Doug Lewis. And for the second time today, a boat has gone over on this very calm course. And it's the second time this season that Doug Lewis has been upside down in a cat. He was in the brand new In Contempt when it flipped back in July. I think that kind of speaks to the fact that when you get a course like this, you tend to overdrive sometimes because you're really looking to gain extra speed. Certainly, this boat is handled beautifully so far. Drambouille on ice, Forrest Barber and John Tomlinson. Forrest Barber, very busy. There's a lot of work. I mean, every, uh, yeah, you see a lot more corners than you would on the longer courses. Um, but the, we've worked hard on making the boat accelerate uh, rather than just pure speed, and it's accelerating better than it ever has, which is, is so important on these little courses. So uh, a lot of work for Johnny and I, and uh, 
we're coming together as, as I think we've come together as a great team, and uh, hopefully it'll work out for us uh, today. That's one of the things, Rich, that's so important is how the team works together. Now, they've come together, but something else has happened here, too. If you looked at that onboard footage, you can see how relaxed Forrest Barber is. His wheel work is minimal right now. This boat is going around a very tight course effortlessly. It's handling like it hasn't handled all season long. Remember, they, they tried to keep her down for a number of races. She's just flying perfectly straight and handling uh, correctly. Meanwhile, this boat, WHM Motorsports, Joey Impressa is throttling the boat and trying to find every ounce of power that he can because they are playing catch-up. A rough water team in a calm water course. The boat is bigger, it's a bit heavier, it's an older design, and it's a great rough water design. And, of course, Billy and Joey are known for their, their rough water talent. Here they're on a short course, almost a sprint course, at a great disadvantage. But what they do have going for them is these new Olds engines. They've got some acceleration today. They haven't had that this season. And one other thing they have going for them, they're riding in second place. Second place is, is better than third, but it's not as good as first. No, that's true, but they're leading some of the pack, and that pack is charging hard behind them. They had the disadvantage of having to go to the outside on that one turn to pass the other fleet, but now that they're into better water, they're starting to pick up speed. Meanwhile, Carl Myers, who was in his final race in offshore racing, along with Bobby Moore, the veteran throttleman, Coming along and how sweet it is. Another a boat with the Oldsmobile engines, another boat that accelerates terrifically, how sweet it is. Now, we saw them in St. Petersburg. They were diving turns. They were drifting sideways. They were doing whatever it took to make this boat competitive. A tough team. Carl Myers will tell you that his first love is the sprint car races, and that's exactly how you drive a sprint car, is to dive into those turns. And it's unfortunate that he's going to be leaving the offshore scene. He's got a good boat that has been gradually coming along and getting better and better. And he's taking a very tight line. Now, he and Bobby Moore in that big 46-foot skater, they're trying to out-accelerate a little 36-foot modified boat, and they're doing it. You can see the kind of power that they've got in this, how sweet it is. Big 11,000-pound boat flying around these straightaways, very short straightaways, but a lot of acceleration. Looking at our Drambouillon ice camera that's aboard the How Sweet It Is, Carl Myers, you can see he's kind of buffeting around there. He is not having a lot of trouble handling the boat with the wheel. They're just taking a bit of a ride because they're trying to catch up, and that means you're forcing those engines to put out the power. Reggie Fountain, the unusual thing on this boat, Reggie Fountain is not only driving it, he is also throttling it. What's that like? I'm driving it and throttling it and trimming it and doing all those things at the same time. I always felt uh, that that uh, I needed to be in control of all that. I'm a little nervous with anybody doing anything else. That's not to mean that they couldn't do it equally as well, but I sort of like to have control of my destiny there. And I guess uh, if anything's going to happen to me in that boat, I'd rather do it to myself and have someone else do it to me. Well, something else Reggie did was he cut the tunnel extension off the back of this boat between races this week. A feverish job, but it has resulted in the boat having a little more bow high attitude, a little better handling, and a little better speed. Well, that's something that he's been looking for. Meanwhile, in contempt, Pat Patel, this has got to be a little frustrating to him. He had a modified boat last year that absolutely dominated on the circuit. He took all sorts of championships. Here he is in the world championships in a boat that he hasn't quite gotten dialed in yet. The boat flipped in its first time on the water earlier this year. After they got all the repairs done and get back in the boat, they were hoping that they'd be able to get a little bit more out of it. He's got a new crew chief, Jim Dyke, who has been on some world championship efforts himself. He's a very talented guy, and I'm sure he'll get the best out of this boat. The boat rides perfectly. It just doesn't seem to have any speed. And to look at it, you can't tell why. She's not carrying her bow real well, but other than that, got good sterling power, the same engines that the leaders of the race are carrying. So there's no reason overall why this boat won't be very competitive as time goes on. It's only 43 feet long, so when you look at a short course like this, that should be the dominant boat out there. Well, talk about dominant boat. This was the in contempt last year. It is now renegade. It was bought out of California and it's right where it was last year in the front of the pack for the modifieds. Now, this is one of the all-time great modified boats. She's capable of speeds in the mid-130s. Now, Cat Can Do won the opening race but can't seem to get the speed together today to catch that Renegade boat. Renegade's just in a world of his own today. Now, we remind everybody again, this is two days of racing. This is the final day, so Renegade is leading in this race but finished in third place on Wednesday. The Cat Can Do boat actually won that race, so the battle there becomes a battle of time, and in this case, about 25 seconds. 25 seconds and two positions. 
Now, Renegade will have to finish at least two positions ahead of Cat Can Do, in addition to being 25 seconds faster. So, can Cat Can Do can do? We're going to find out when we come back to Biloxi, Mississippi, with more of World Championship Racing. Stay with us. race for this gentleman gene whip gene is the commissioner of the apba the last two years he has done a phenomenal job building one of the finest offshore circuits anywhere in the world and we certainly salute gene whip and congratulate him on a job well done we are going to miss him in that position these guys know all about this circuit and what gene has done for it they have led many many times they have led a lot of times they're also the fastest v bottom in the world and that's official in sarasota this year they went over 133 miles an hour in a two-way flying kilometer and couple that with the national championship they garnered this has been quite a year for ocean spray bruce penhall and dennis Segalis, and they have plenty to celebrate no question about it aboard the ocean spray they are in the lead right now for the super v's but behind them is the nemshaw now that's the way those boats finished in the earlier race first and second respectively Nemshoff right now again is playing catch up this kind of water they've got to open up the throttles I'm gonna come in a little bit okay come on tap we're gonna get some crosswaves it's fine And they're very busy in there. They have to be. They're running diesel power in a boat which is acknowledged to be the finest rough water V-bottom of its size in the world. Unfortunately, this is a flat, calm racing surface and a very short course. You've got a supercharged gasoline-powered ocean spray out there. This is a turbocharged diesel, but from an acceleration standpoint, you want supercharged gas, I think, today. Well, this boat certainly has performed well all throughout the season. They did have one accident in the boat, and we were kind of wondering how they were going to come out of it, but they came out of it just hands on the throttle and ready to go. Ocean spray, as you can see, just beautiful as it goes through the turn. It takes plenty of water. They can hold it tight enough onto the course to be able to just keep that distance between themselves in second place. And again, we remind everybody that in the first race earlier this week, Ocean Spray took first. Nemshoff took second, and that's the way they're riding right now. You saw as he came out of the turn in Ocean Spray, the fountain boat went through the rooster tail and is now on the outside. And again, we remind everybody, there is some pretty heavy traffic out there. They've got to be very careful with the wakes. Very careful, but interestingly enough, we're looking at a state-of-the-art V-bottom 1998. And a few years ago, these kind of wakes would have made these boats rock back and forth, sort of tippy-top on that V-hull. The way they've got them set up now, they run almost as flat as the cats. There's Nemshoff riding in second place, and he's getting plenty of power, just not enough to catch that leader. Now, he's got a deeper V. He's got a little more chine walking than the ocean spray, but he, too, is having a pretty calm time here at over 100 miles an hour on this tight course. It's amazing how well they handle, given the tight confines of this course. This is a boat essentially designed for rough water ocean racing, and it's getting around very, very well. It certainly is. It's a bootsy design boat built in Italy. Let's go on board Jelly Belly. Jelly Belly is making a play for first place in modified class coming up on the inside of the Renegade boat. And we saw how fast Renegade is running, so Jelly Belly's really flying low right now. That's Rick Bowling out of California. Boat's handling beautifully, and he has taken the... Wait a minute, he's just lost his right-hand engine. Just lost his starboard motor. Rich, if they look over, they can watch the tacks. You see the two dials that are the highest on the panel on the left-hand side. You can see the one on the right is up and down as he tries to restart that engine. What happens when an engine goes out? Well, you get a tremendous pull to the right to begin with, or the side of the engine that's, that's been shut off. The other thing is you lose power in terms of power steering, and you also lose your concentration. And Renegade is taking advantage of that loss of concentration and speed to forge about, what, a 100-yard lead right there. And it looks like the engine has come back a Jelly Belly gone again. We'll see if it stays up because isn't it true? Once engine trouble, 
always ends in trouble? That's right, Dick, because these things don't occur in a vacuum. You, you'll have some kind of a problem. It'll probably recur, and there it is again. You can see Rick, he's hitting the starter button one more time, and, and his uh, throttleman is trying to change something, maybe a cable or a wire Whoa, or something. Whoa, watch Whoa. out! <laughs> and now it's, now steering problems, you can see the pro it's coming apart on them right there. Here they were going for the lead one second, and now it's all going away in the middle of the race course. It looks like they're going to be down to one engine for the rest of the time out there, which will not make for an easy or a very happy ride. That's Jelly Belly gone again. And Lightning Jacks, meanwhile, is charging in there. He'll take over second and be happy with it. And John Woolley, Bill Durham, they've been at or near the lead all season long. And yet another 36-foot skater. Today, this boat, like, whoops, it's getting a little rough out there. That's actually a weight caused by a boat going across the start-finish line. But as you can see, they laid her right back down, and they, and they caught her and gathered her right up. And the boat that is running perfection is the number four. In the open class, John Tomlinson on the throttle. Forrest Barber is the owner and also driver of that boat. We've mentioned several times he's driven just about everything that goes on land or sea. Let's take a look at our Powerboat Magazine leaderboard up to the moment. Drambuie on ice is leading in the open class. We'll be back to Biloxi in a moment. That occurred this day. Earlier, we had more competition. We had the A class, and from our Caterpillar Marine Power aerial camera, you see the start of A. A class is a full race single engine V bottom between 28 and 35 feet in length, and this is the newest boat in the class. Out of Italy, another Fabio Buzzi design, owned by Mark Nemshoff, also running in Super V with his son, but they ran two classes, and this one, the A boat, this brand new Buzzi. You can see the cockpit has been lowered below the deck line. It's a radically new design and a quick one. The boat is running only on the back six inches. It's laid out so beautifully that it's really stunning to watch. Now, the A class is, as you can see, a very tight and well fought class. Everybody's bunched up here. Now, interesting enough, too, the Nemshoffs in the Super V class are running a diesel engine, but in this one, they're running one 700 horsepower sterling now in in trimming the boat out and getting it set for this race they raced on wednesday they were able to take a second place they had some problems but today they've got everything corrected they've got to beat the second place boat imco by more than the 18 seconds that imco beat them on wednesday and they are battling the water right now and doing a fine job of it and again we notice how the boat does not tick tock back and forth look at how amazingly it's sitting on just the back few inches of the hull it's virtually airborne and you can see how they've gone over to the gasoline engine. They've moved everything back and extended it off the back end of the boat. Now, here's Team Imco, Rick Taylor and Fred Inman. Now, this boat was the boat that won the early race on Wednesday, and that was the boat that won by 18 seconds over Nemshoff. Right now, that, that boat is passing up the national champion, the A1, in motion and taking over second place. But it was too little, too late. They were not able to pull down that 18-second margin. As a matter of fact, they finished 35 seconds behind number 41, Baby Trimax, the Nemshaw father and son team. World Championships mean something, and I, th I think this boat coming all the way from Italy, it means even more. I understand the builder, Fabio Buzzi, has been a little nervous this week. Yeah, he's been quite nervous. You know, he sent us what he called a winning boat, and then the pressure was all on us. So fortunately, we came through for him today. We're really happy. He's been a big help to us. In other racing action, the B-Class, twin engines in a 41 to 43-foot V-bottom. This is the Dramamine. They had a problem. They didn't finish on Wednesday, so even a first place in race number two did not result in the world championship. They ran beautifully, but not good enough on Wednesday. The boat that everybody knew just had to take a second place in this race to have the points to win was Sitco Superguard. So Jay Johnson, Nigel Hook, and Brad Kaplan, they have reason to celebrate. They were the winners in race number two, and they took home the world championship. Add that to the national championship, but 1998 was a very good year for the Superguard team. And that's after they had a very bad start when they were down in Fort Myers, Florida, the first race of the year. The Sitco Superguard points, well, there's your top boat, Sitco Superguard 201, world champion in the APBA and UIM. Very happy team, and rightfully so. They did a lot of hard work this year, and it all paid off. Now let's jump over to the S-Class. Twin engine outboards between 28 and 32 feet in length. These are some of the quickest boats in powerboat racing. The top speed is between 115 and 120, but they accelerate very quickly and they turn superbly. Now this is Joe Black and Richard Ginsburg in the Citrushine, one of the most colorful boats out there, and they were running beautifully all day long. 
reminding everybody at this point, this is the first race of the day today. It's actually their second race. They ran earlier in the week. This boat was in competition with the Cat Can Do and Secret Agent. There you see the S2 Secret Agent leading the race, Dave Bag and Paul Whittier. Now, Cat Can Do has got to make up 16 seconds in order to stand a shot at this championship. And right now, Secret Agent is trying to hold them off. Secret Agent won the race on Wednesday by a 16 second margin over the boat to the left of your screen, Cat Can Do. Now, Cat Can Do managed to get by Secret Agent, but then they had to put a 16 second cushion. And as you can see, it's only about a two second cushion at this point in the race, and they weren't able to extend it beyond that. They wound up winning by two seconds on Saturday, only to lose the world championship in overall time. So Cat Can Do took the win earlier today, but it was Secret Agent that took home the big prize, the World Championship. But still, Cat Can Do's got a lot to be proud of. They did a good job. They came on about midway through the circuit. There you see the final standings in our Sitco Super Guard points. Cat Can Do could not get the time. We'll be back to more racing today in a moment. Take a look at another couple of classes. In the, this is a triple engine outboard powered catamaran class between 30 and 35 feet. These boats are also very quick and very nimble, and their speed range is equivalent to the twin-engine outboard. The Pennzoil, one of the most colorful boats in the class, took the lead right off the start, but he had his hands full with the Hooters. The P1, our national champion, got by the Pennzoil on the inside of the course and made a real race out of it. Became a race of strategy. Pennzoil, not finishing very well on Wednesday, wound up racing for the lead. Steve Page in the Hooters boat, the P1 on the far side of your screen, knew that if he had a boat between himself and Crime Buster, he would get the world championship. So here was Pennzoil trying to take the lead, but also helping the leader, Hooters, by putting himself between Hooters and the second place boat. And on the basis of time, that's out the window at this point. Pennzoil stayed very, very strong. Nicky Coutreau had that boat operating beautifully, but Steve Page, look at the attitude of that boat. He's hardly bouncing at all on the water, just holding it in there. Very familiar with water like this because it's a lot like he's got down in Fort Myers, Florida. And he took advantage of having the smallest boat in the class on one of the shortest courses we've ever seen to take the win here on Saturday and the overall win in the World Championship in Pro Stock. So Steve Page came out of it in great shape. He has his throttleman, Joey Grattan, who he's had all season long out of Sarasota, Florida. As we said earlier, Steve is out of Fort Myers. They are going to take the win. This was the boat that was hoping to challenge for the world championship at Crime Buster, thanks to Pennzoil, comes in third place. A great drive, a good hard strive for a world championship between a couple of good boats, and Hooters takes the win in our Sitco Super Guard points race. Congratulations to Steve Page from Fort Myers, Florida. Well, we came into today knowing that we had to we had to win today. There was not a question about it. Uh, we knew on day at, at the end of day one we had to be in first or second place to be mathematically in the game. Joey did the job. We knew we had to beat the Crime Busters by over six seconds today. That was the that was the interval. Uh, the Pennzoil guys ran tough all day, but the uh, the Hooters boat was just flawless. It was absolutely flawless. Joey Joey throttled a flawless uh, a race. It's fabulous. Couldn't be any better. What a way to end the season. And we must recall that it's chocolate chip cookies that make the difference for the Hooters team. They started that down in Fort Myers, Florida, where they won, and here they won today for the World Championship, and they had the cookies again. Let's go back to a boat that is from just a little south of Fort Myers, Florida, Naples, Florida, and that's the team Chiropractic, the F-146, another dominating force on the circuit. This has been the boat to beat in the Factory One class. Now, Factory One is a stock Mercury 500 HP inboard outboard package in a stock factory type boat, a boat that you can buy in a dealer's showroom. This boat is rearranged in such a way as the cockpit is covered over with a, a dashboard that's moved back somewhat, but basically it's a stock boat. And now they can display that World Championship trophy on that boat. Sitco Super Guard points, Team Chiropractic winner, the F-146 with 218 points. Moving now to the Factory 2 teams. Brian Kirby and Doug Lewis. We saw Doug Lewis upside down in the modified class. He did a lot better in Factory 2 class here in this beautiful white Sutphin. After some controversy at the end of the race, they were declared the winner in Factory 2. Now, Factory 271, the Matco Fountain with Reggie Fountain and Martin Sanborn on board. This is a factory entry right out of Fountain Powerboats. And as you would expect, they led the races 
both days, crossed the finish line first, but they were disqualified for a missing exhaust riser in the exhaust manifold. And what does that mean? It means that this is really a stock class. You must have every part that Mercury Marine manufactures in that motor on the race course, and it cost them dearly. It cost them two wins. Now, here's a boat that has dominated on the circuit all year long in Factory 2, and they are right now riding in third. That's Mastery Engine Marine Center. And on the inside of that boat, challenging is the Ultimate Warlock. The Mastery team, and you can see they're kind of signaling over to the other boat and to each other, has the father and son team of Michael and Alan Allweiss. And in the middle is the owner of the boat, Abib Mastery. Now, they've done just great all year long, but right now, they're being taken over in third place by the Ultimate Warlock. Now, these factory classes are maturing as we speak, and all of a sudden, the dominance of mastery has been broken, and this boat right here, Sutphin, which has been around since the beginning of the class, they found the keys to the vault today. They are the world champions. So Richard Sutphin out of Cape Coral, Florida, Brian Kirby and Doug Lewis out of Brick, New Jersey, take the win on our Sitco Super Guard points board in Factory 2 with 191 points overall. In Factory 3, now this is a brand new class. Two Mercury 500 HPs in a catamaran between 30 and 35 feet in length. And a very exciting class, F-305 Sudden Impact, actually the largest boat in the class, wound up winning. And that's surprising because on a sm short course like this, you'd expect the smaller boats to win. But these guys had their boat dialed in a little bit quicker. It's a set of brand new class. They're still finding out how to, how to get these boats to perform. They did very well. Sitco Superguard points, World Championship in Factory 3 to 307, Sever Tech Eliminator. Of the course, there's number four, Drambuiano, the driver, the throttleman, John Tomlinson. They are now leading the race and have been since the first lap. And that can work against you because now they're hearing all kinds of gremlins in there. They're being overly cautious right now. They don't want to make any mistakes. They've had the lead from the get-go here. That's a tremendous strain. They are setting the pace. They know that the pack is behind them and that the pack is trying to catch them. They have to maintain a perfect line around the course, which they have so far done. Well, as you look down from our Caterpillar Marine Power aerial cam, there is nobody near them. But in actuality, there is. Number 39 is trying to catch them from behind. How sweet it is. Carl Myers, this is his final race in offshore powerboat racing. Bobby Moore, who's a veteran of long time standing, probably will come back with somebody next year. But this boat right now is having probably its best race of the season at the moment. Now, we said that WHM and How Sweet It Is both have Oldsmobile engines and a better acceleration ratio. WHM was really chipping away on Dram Bowie's lead, only to fall out of the race. Now, number 39 with the Oldsmobile engines is also coming up and also starting to accelerate, also closing the gap on Dram Bowie. Is Dram Bowie holding back, or is How Sweet It Is catching up? That's the question. As you look down from our aerial cam, you can see the margin between the two boats. Now, Drambuie on ice has decided to take a little bit of an outside groove. He's done that a lot this year. And then he likes to try to dive in, but with the lane rules now, he's got to be very careful about that. Meanwhile, the inside of the course, that is where How Sweet It Is is trying to ride. And that old sprint car driver, he knows exactly what he's trying to do. And you've got Bobby Moore on the throttles. We've seen Bobby Moore. He will use more trim in the open class at higher speeds than anybody else. He will float that boat. He'll do whatever it takes, shy of turning it over. The man is amazing. He won't have an accident, but they'll come as close as any duo you'll see out there. And we might say that this is a battle of the throttlemen because in the Drambuie on ice, you've got one of the best in John Tomlinson. Meanwhile, the Renegade boat continues to dominate the modified field, and Renegade is going to come home for the checker. Consistently the fastest boat in the class, M99 Renegade, a wonderful racing career in only three short years on the circuit. Here comes the V1 Ocean Spray, and this was another boat that's had a very, very consistent year. Dennis Segalis and Bruce Penhall, they've done a great job out of California, and they make it a clean sweep for the world championships in both races, race one and race two. The world championship on top of the national championship like a cherry on top of the cranberry sauce. Absolutely beautiful. Well, here's the Drambuie on ice. Again, the boat that has led in the open class since the start of the race had a little bit of a challenge from Matt Alcombe. That boat went over on the inside of the course. Now, since then, Drambuie has had a threat from WHM Motorsports. The latest threat is from this boat, how sweet it is. The number 39 
Carl Myers and Bobby Moore have now switched to the outside of the course. Carl Myers in his last race, he's about to retire, and you know they have pulled out every stop they have in that boat. There's a great driver in Carl Myers and a great throttleman in Bobby Moore. Drambuie on ice has their hands full. As we come down to the finish, do they have enough of a margin to hold off these guys? And they have worked all year long to get themselves up in this position again. They won earlier in Texas. This would be their second win of the year as they come. The sun glistening on the water. It is absolutely perfect conditions for this boat. They are really riding hard. But there is a challenge, and they are well aware of it as they come down with the checkered flag in view. Drambuie on ice has only a small margin now on number 39. They are racing down to the finish line, and will they hold them off for the world championship? Yes, they will. John Tomlinson on the throttles, and a very happy Forrest Barber on the wheel. Well, they have worked hard for it. They had one other race that they won. They set the world speed record for these boats in Sarasota, Florida, at better than 156 miles an hour, and now they take a world championship. I think Carl Myers, on a retirement note, has to be happy his boat finally responded to him the way they wanted it to he gets a second place but to a very fast first place boat and you know Carl Myers is completing a career to be proud of one of the fastest men in the history of offshore racing never held back on a race course he was always aggressive always a competitor and always a lot of fun to watch well, it's been a great day of racing for the open class, and Carl Myers, I'm sure, along with Bobby Moore, will have a lot to celebrate tonight here in Biloxi, Mississippi. And there you can see the congratulations kind of going back and forth between the two lead boats as they go side by side. The new world champion, Dram Ice, Forrest Barber, and John Tomlinson. There's the modified winner, Renegade. Boy, this boat was just great this year. And there, your Sitco Super Guard points in the modified world champion is Renegade. And let's go down and talk to the winning team. Renegade Racing, you found the combination today. We did. Uh, we hadn't planned on really coming out here running this hard. Uh, it's a new boat to us. Uh, we want to kind of take it a little bit easy, but. Uh, God, it felt so good, and we were so on, and just everything clicked so well. Brad got me to all the turns, no problem. The boat just clicked perfectly, and we thought we we're just along for Sunday cruise. Also, we looked behind us, and he kept saying there was nobody around. I said, we couldn't believe we were, we were running first. In fact, we took an extra lap just to be on the safe side. There are your Sitco Super Guard points in Super V, the world champions, the Ocean Spray Team. Ocean Spray Team, we are smiling today, world champions. Oh, we love it, you know. <laughs> like I said before, we had a terrific race on Wednesday. We had a terrific race on Saturday. It was a little bit mixed up today. And a little uh, controversy in the first turn there with Alcone tipping over, and they kind of held the race a little bit. But we just ran our own race like we always do. And I I've got to make a special thanks to Ocean Spray, Fountain, our whole crew, you know, Kevin, Donald, Gordy, Monkey Boy, uh, <laughs> our, our wives. <laughs> Um, our advertising agency, the Wilson Group, man, it, it, we're on fire. <laughs> Love it. I, I really don't need to say anything other than that, but the Ocean Spray Bunch just did a great job today, boy. We're really pleased. The, the fountain worked great, and uh, we couldn't be happier. We just had a heck of a year this year, and uh, if it wasn't for this Ocean Spray crew, man, uh, we wouldn't be there, that's for sure. It's fun to be there. World champions, Ocean Spray. Congratulations, guys. Terrific job. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Some celebration now. One, two, three, go! Plenty of celebrating going on in Biloxi, Mississippi. We still have to talk to our open class world champions as they start dunking the drivers and crews. We'll be back to talk with other world champions. Stay with us here on Speed Vision. the number one high-performance boat manufacturing. Aha, speed changes you. And by Sitco SuperGuard Motor Oil, the official motor oil of the American Power Boat Association. Sitco, when it counts. Well, the docks are happy for the Drambui on Ice crew here in Biloxi, Mississippi. Forrest Barber, John Tomlinson, they worked hard all year long. And as you can see, with our Sitco Super Guard points, Dram Bowie on ice clearly takes the world championship. Are they happy? Yeah, we were, we were, you know, pretty discouraged about the halfway point of the year. You know, I was just talking with Forrest. St. Pete was a, was a, you know, a downer. And uh, we were getting discouraged, but we just kept going, kept going, kept trying. 
I remember Forrest was sending the faxes saying, hey, let's keep the spirit of the team up. Let's keep going. And, you know, it paid off. We, and we had a good week. We had a great week. And I just attribute that really to just everybody working, all the guys that shop, every single man that's on this boat, uh, big or small. I tell you, everyone just put their heart into the team all year long. And that's really what counted and it paid off. And Forrest Barber, here you are, first year in open class, world championship flag on your shoulder. Well, it seems unbelievable, but you, when you look back at the work that everybody put into this team, you know, I think we really deserved it by the time the, the year uh, wound up. Uh, Johnny's exactly right. Every person on this team put their heart and soul into this effort, and we deserve it. I'm glad to be here, but I, it does seem like a dream. And thank you, Johnny, so much. Well, you remember the boat that went over, Matt Alcone and Jerry Galbraith and the Alcone Motorsports. They are back on shore. They are okay. Let's talk to them. You've taken very tight arcs before. Was this anything unusual? Were you, were you cranking in harder, or was it just something that, that let go in the back? You know, uh, at this point, I, you know, I really don't know. Uh, I'd like to see the tapes, and we'll see when we're going over if all the parts are there as we're sliding across. Uh, it just, uh, you know, it, it didn't feel that bad. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, next thing we knew, uh, you know, Jerry's so good that he knew that we were going over before we went over. He said, you know, be prepared. Here we go. And there we went. We flopped. Um, it's just one of those things. We were aggressive and we felt going into the uh, to the race today that we were going to make him earn it. And so we were very aggressive into the turn. You know, second thought, would I do it again? Absolutely. We would do the same thing again. And um, that's just boat racing, and we'll be back. Well, it has been a great year of racing, no question about that. And we want to thank each and every one of you for joining us in Biloxi, Mississippi, for this World Championship event. If you want to know more about offshore racing, APBA online at apba-offshore.com. We're there to give you all the info. Thanks to Jeff Girardi and the crew from freeze frame video for that great on-boat camera video that we've been seeing all season long. Also to Tri-County Incorporated, reliable two-way radios, customized communications, qualified technical assistance in both Ohio and Florida. We invite you to join us again next year for the APBA Baja Offshore Series. When we want to say thanks on behalf of all our crew. For Rich Lores, I'm Dick Crippen. So long from Biloxi. See you next year.